Thanks for being here today. Uh, for those of y'all who don't know me, my name is Martin Guerra West. I serve as the Executive Dean of Arts and Communications here at Mountain View College. I joined Mountain View uh, in 1992, first as an ESL advisor. If all of y'all know Florencio Alonso, that, that was my job back then. And uh, I saw an advertisement in the Dallas Morning News, bilingual preferred. And um, I said, I think I can do that. I didn't really know uh, what Mountain View was all about. I did not know about the district. And after I got the job, I, you know, I had just moved to Dallas, uh, fresh out of college, uh, fresh out of graduate school. And people ask, uh, you work at Mountain View full time? Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. But soon after, I discovered that really the best job in the world to have is to be faculty. I think uh, that is the, the going rumor. I can speak, I can, I can honestly say that's true because I've been a PSS, I've been a faculty member, and now I'm on a one-year contract as an administrator. Okay, all right. Uh, Y'all's jobs are safe, y'all. You're in one college, you're going to have jobs forever, all right? You program, it's, it's, it's the folks like me who don't know where we're going to be and who we're going to report to. But um, I love teaching. And I still consider myself a teacher. Um, I, 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 I'm blessed to have many talents, um, including music. As some of y'all know, I'm a performer. I'm a, I'm a professional teacher, educator, and I'm also a prof professional performer. Performer. Uh, I um, primarily as a, as a music minister at my church, and uh, I have performed opera, a musical theater, uh, play lead roles, uh, chorus. I'm not a dancer though. I, I consider myself a one and a half threat. But <laughs> singer, sometimes actor. Um, anyway, welcome. Um, this um, presentation, I've been, I've been, it's called a last lecture, but in, in a lot of ways for me, it's a first lecture because this is a presentation that I've been brewing in my head for, for months, for years, and, and I have an idea to create a course that will be based on, on this, probably a 1302 English composition. I currently teach in English 1301, and I introduce some of these elements in that 1301, but really I, I foresee this as a, a really, really great material for 1302 class, which is composition, research, etc. Um, first of all, let me just do a little quick survey. How many of you uh, are familiar with the musical Hamilton? Okay. Uh, how, how, raise your hand. Okay, by familiar, I should, let, let me rephrase that. How many of you have uh, seen the stage version? There's only one way to see it, on stage. Either, either on Broadway itself, in Chicago, LA, San Francisco or on tour? All right, two people, three, four, great, okay, four. Uh, how many of you have heard the, the CD or the score, we call it, in its entirety? Okay, only, almost the same people, maybe even fewer. Hmm, okay. Um, let, let me just give you a little bit of history of how I fell in love with this musical. Um, I, I was not a fan. I was not a fan because I'm not a fan of hip hop. You know, I, I, you know, sacred music, folk music. I do like rhythm and blues. I do love uh, dance music, but hip hop had evolved into a, a genre that that just didn't speak to me. Okay, fair enough. Everybody has their favorites. And so even, um, so when Lin-Manuel Miranda, who uh, it, it composed his first musical called In the Heights, uh, I liked the theme, I, 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 I heard about it, I saw the Tony Award winning uh, performance of 96,000, and I said, nah, it's not for me. It was not until I was actually cast in the regional premiere of In the Heights in Fort Worth, and I played the daddy role, the, uh, the father of the young young girl who went to Stanford, that I fell in love with Lynn Manuel Miranda's genius. Uh, if you've never heard, listened to In the Heights or uh, or seen a production, to me it is the 
best bilingual musical ever produced. So uh, go, go, go see it. Uh, it's coming out in film this summer. Uh, I'm, I'm, I have high hopes for it. It's going to be filmed on site in, in Washington Heights, New York City. Uh, so even though I loved In the Heights after performing in it, when Hamilton came out, I heard all the hype, but because of what I saw, the little snippets I saw, I was like, God, I don't, I don't, know, I don't know, it's too much, too much. And it, I downloaded the, 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 the score, and I tried to play that first track, and you're going to hear this first track in a little bit, and I couldn't get through it. I didn't, well, let's put it this way, when you, I never have time to hear a whole score. Who has time to do that, right? So the only time I could really do it is when I was a captive audience to myself in the car on my seven-hour journey to Corpus Christi. So, so I, I, put, I put it in. Hello. I put it in. And got through the first track. I said, well, that's pretty good. I think I hear the lyrics here. I think I'm learning something here. Second track, third track, fourth track. Okay. By the time it gets to the end, I'm in tears. Okay? It's a sign of a work of art that can reach the mind and reach the heart together. And there's many, many reasons why Hamilton is a work of genius. It's a work of genius, uh, speaking of the composer, Lin-Manuel Miranda, who wrote both the lyrics and the music. Okay? I, I can sing, y'all, but I don't know how to compose. It's, it's a different kind of genius to sing, uh, to compose. And work of genius, namely speaking of Alexander Hamilton himself, okay? So let's, let's um, just one more, one more question. Why, uh, just a, 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 the historians in the room do not answer this question. Why, why, why didn't Alexander Hamilton get all the attention he deserved before this musical? Why is he not as famous as our other founding fathers, such as George Washington, Thomas Jefferson? Even the unpopular John Adams got a whole HBO series. <laughs> any, any ideas? Yes, sir, Ulysses. Because he was never a U.S. citizen. I wasn't born in the States. He was a U.S. citizen. He was uh, definitely suspected because he was an immigrant. Um, yes. And he did not come from proper breeding. He was Ill an illegitimate child, okay? Born in the Caribbean, all right? That's one reason. Did, he, was not, he was not a landed gentry kind of guy. Mount Vernon, George Washington. Monticello, Thomas Jefferson. Boston lawyer, John Adams. I could go on and on on all the founding fathers. And another reason, I'll give, I'll give you the answer. Um, he died too soon, okay? Um, and those, his political enemies, including Thomas Jefferson, including John Adams, outlived him and were able to twist the story. If I'm, I, I'm being a little simplistic, uh, Ken, but not really. Uh, he was not well liked by his fellow founding fathers. Uh, he, everybody suspected him of being a Tory, uh, of loving, loving the king too much or loving elitism. He, that they considered himself, even though he was poor or was born poor or poorish, he was uh, suspected of loving money. Um, think of, think of uh, the, the suspicion we have of Wall Street. Okay? He was a genius about economics. And, and such. So, after he died, after he was killed, by the way, uh, in a duel, the uh, scandal, the vice president killed a man in New Jersey. Okay? So, uh, duels were still things of honor at the time. And, and anyway, so that's why Hamilton did not get the, the credit he deserved. Hamilton the musical finally brought to light that Hamilton probably, probably con contributed to the current state of our country more than any other founding father, okay? Especially when it comes to economics and our, our financial system. 
Hmm. So, the source for this musical. Totally unexpected source. While Lin-Manuel Miranda was on break from In the Heights, he went on vacation to Mexico and took a book and was reading Ron Chernow, Chernow is that how you say it? Chernow's a, a biography of Hamilton and his wheels started turning, okay? So the first really it was engendered or originated in the spoken word as a poem. The first track you're gonna hear was really performed for the first time at the White House in front of uh, Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, and I'm gonna let you, um, and, and, and Hamilton, or Lin-Manuel Miranda, saw in Alexander Hamilton uh, the spirit of hip hop, the spirit of rap. Okay, and, and this was like, what? You know, he was a white guy. Uh, 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 yeah, there might have been Octoroon, there might have been uh, uh, some African American blood or Caribbean blood back way back, but he looked white. So, um, so let me let me play at least this first part, of, and I'll let Lin Manuel Miranda explain why he was so inspired. My God. Um, I'm, I'm thrilled uh, the White House called me uh, tonight uh, because uh, I'm actually working on a hip-hop album. Uh, it's a concept album about the life of someone I think embodies hip-hop, Treasury Secretary Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> you laugh, but it's true. Um, he, was, uh, he was born a, a penniless orphan uh, in St. Croix of illegitimate birth, um, became George Washington's right-hand man, uh, became Treasury Secretary, caught beef with every other founding father, uh, and all on the strength of his writing. I think he embodies uh, the word's ability to make a difference. Uh, so uh, I'm going to be doing the first song from that tonight. I'm accompanied by Tony and Grammy-winning music director Alex Lacamoire. Uh, anything you need to know, I'll be playing uh, Vice President Aaron Burr, uh, and snap along if you like. <laughs> How does a bastard orphan son of a whore and a Scotsman dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence impoverished and squalor grow up to be a hero and a scholar? Okay. That's the debut of the opening track, a poem, okay? This is what it evolved into. This is the opening track of the musical Fully Fledged. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore and a Scotsman Dropped in the middle of a forgotten spot in the Caribbean by providence impoverished and squalor. Grow up to be a hero and a scholar. The ten dollar founding father without a father got a lot farther by working a lot harder, by being a lot smarter, by being a self starter by 14. They placed him in charge of a trading charter. And every day while slaves were being slaughtered and carted away Across the waves he struggled and kept his guard up Inside he was longing for something to be a part of The brother was ready to beg, steal, borrow, or barter Then a hurricane came and devastation rained A man saw his future drip, dripping down the drain Put a pencil to his temple, connected it to his brain And he wrote his first refrain, a testament to his pain the word got around, they said this kid is insane, man Took up a collection just to send him to the mainland Get your education, don't forget from whence you came And the world's gonna know your name What's your name, man? Alexander Hamilton My name is Alexander Hamilton And there's a million things I haven't done But just you wait, just you Father split, full of it, debt ridden Two years later, see Alex and his mother bed Ridden, half dead, sitting in their own sick The scent thick, and Alex got better But his mother wiped quick Moving with a car 
cousin, my cousin committed suicide Left him with nothing but ruined brides Up and blue inside a voice saying Alex, you gotta fend for yourself He started retreating and beating Every tree that's on the shelf but There would've been nothing left to do For someone less astute He would've been dead and destitute Without a cent or restitution Started working, clerking for his late mother's landlord Trading sugar cane and rum And all the things he can't afford to scare the Consider uh, the, one of the reasons I, I want to incorporate uh, this musical into my course is because don't you consider him a role model for students, a role model for our students. In particular, uh, it, it, he was a self-starter. He was self-taught. He read everything within his grasp, everything that he could read. Uh, so when, he, when they discovered his genius, they, they paid or paid, uh, they, they paid or sponsored him, gave him uh, a ship, because they knew that he did not belong on that island. So they sent him to the new land, the new world, uh, uh, excuse me, the United States or the colonies, not yet a country. And uh, when he got there, they didn't have TSI at the time. <laughs> but you could not, even as a young white, man with a scholarship, you could not enter the, the colleges of the day without knowing Latin and Greek. And so he had to go to a prep school first to learn his Latin and Greek. And then he went to, he couldn't get into uh, what was not, uh, what was Princeton, at the, uh, Princeton, what became Princeton. So he went to King's College instead uh, and got his education there. Uh, and. Um, um, uh, King's College is now called Columbia, Columbia University, so uh, all there. So keep that in mind when we're talking about self-starters. So this poem at the White House, he, he admitted it's a concept in my mind. A con I have a concept. And for a while there, he called it the Hamilton Mixtape. So he knew that he wanted to put several songs together. He, he still probably was not convinced that this was material for an actual story. He said, well, I'll just tell a sequence of songs. Um, but mixtape also implies that it was going to be different styles of music. So it was not, it's not all hip hop. One of the reasons I love this musical is the diversity of musical styles. Uh, so off Broadway, off Broadway debut. Everybody, uh, for those of y'all who don't know show business, a lot of times a new work is workshopped in you know a studio somewhere first, and then if you get somebody to produce it in off Broadway, hey, you're moving up, uh, and then and then uh, when you move uh, to the real Broadway, the great Broadway, uh, then. So uh, it was he was already being recognized. Rumor got, got was going around. Hey. The guy who wrote In the Heights is writing about this guy named Hamilton. So there were still doubters out there. 
can this be a success? <laughs> then, in July 2015, it, Hamilton does move up, up to the Richard Rogers Theater. And here you see the creative team, uh, Lin-Manuel Miranda in the middle, uh, and the music director, the choreographer, and the stage director. Uh, August 6th, 2015, of Hamilton officially opens on Broadway soon, hailed as a work of genius. So why, why is he called a genius? Well, the MacArthur Grant said so. All right, so uh, very soon after it debuted, he gets a grant. Uh, and they don't call you a genius unless MacArthur says so, right? Uh, or that foundation. The dare, uh, and this is what they said, the daring pairing of street culture with America's founding narrative recalls the youthful defined spirit of the American Revolution and cross-racial casting can reconnects the present day to the diverse immigrant society of the 13 new colonies. So that, that was one of the controversial things and, and still a little bit gets talked about is um, uh, all of the founding fathers on stage are people of color. And the only um, white person on stage is King George. Okay, and we'll, we'll see a little bit of him. So I, again, the, the, you can imagine this has caused no, no, uh, no little amount of consternation among working actors. Hey, I, I, I can rap. I'm, I, I'm white, but I can rap. Uh, the, but the whole point, I think, what made this work, what made this concept work, is putting the words of our founding fathers in a cast 100% of color just uh, it, we were able we were able to imagine them being the radicals of their day they were turning the world upside down and rap and rap has always been a not it, some uh, uh, music of rap uh, tends to uh, have a sense of rebellion, revolution, and braggadocio. I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm smarter than you, I'm richer than you. All of those elements Hamilton had. So he, he took this idea of Hamilton being a rapper, a revolutionary, and said, you know what? They all were. And you're going to hear that in, in, even in George Washington's voice, his booming voice as the general. Okay, here comes the general. Uh, it, it, it really makes us listen to our founding fathers in a new way. So here is um, just a little bit of um, story and narrative here. The real star of Hamilton is Aaron Burr as a musician. Aaron Burr actually has most of the songs. Okay, it, it's like, it's like the, the movie Amadeus. Uh, Salieri is the one that is envious of, of the genius of Mozart. In the same way, Aaron Burr cannot understand the ambition and or the the courage and the and the unbridled, uh, non-stop, prolific writing that Hamilton is. And so, even though they share similar ambition, they're political rivals, and Aaron Burr is more politically, more politically cautious. He is a more, opportunist, more opportunistic. So he will give advice to Hamilton and say, hey, hey, talk less, smile more. Don't let them know what you're against or what you're for. You know, typical politician, right? I can think of several who will not, who don't have a backbone can count 53 who don't have a backbone. <laughs> All right. Uh, Alexander Hamilton was all about principle, uh, value. Uh, he had, because of all the reading he did, he, he, he believed in stuff and wanted um, to see it come to pass. Okay. So here is the second track in uh, I just love the, these lyrics. I am not throwing away my shot. I am not throwing away my shot. Hey, yo, I'm just like my country. I'm young, scrappy, and hungry, and I'm not throwing away my shot. I'm gonna get a scholarship to King's College. I probably shouldn't brag, but dag, I'm amazed and astonished. The problem is I'm not a lot of brain.
brains with no polish I gotta holler just to be heard with every word I drop knowledge, I'm a diamond in the rough A shiny piece of coal trying to reach my goal My power of speech, unimpeachable Only 19, but my mind is older These New York City streets get colder I shoulder every burden, every disadvantage I've learned to manage I don't have a gun to brandish I walk these streets famished The plan is to fan this fuck into a flame But damn, it's getting dark, so let me spell out the name I am the A-L To be a colony that runs independently Meanwhile, Britney keeps shitting on us endlessly Essentially, they tax us relentlessly Then King George turns around, runs a spending spree He ain't never gonna set his descendants free So there will be a revolution in this century And to me He says in parentheses Don't be shocked when your history book mentions me I will lay down my life if it sets us free Eventually, you'll see my ascendancy And I am not thrown away my shot I am not throwing away my shot Hey yo, I'm just like my country I'm young, scrappy, and hungry And I'm not throwing away my shot I am not throwing away my shot I am not throwing away my shot Hey yo, I'm just like my country I'm young, scrappy, and hungry And I'm not throwing away my shot It's time to take a shot I dream of life without a monarchy The unrest in France will lead to anarchy Anarchy, how you say? I use all oh, anarchy <laughs> When I try to make the other side Okay I'm not going to play every track in its entirety, uh, but that gives you an idea of um, Hamilton's ambition and, and his refusal to listen to the advice of Aaron Burr. I have, I have an opportunity here, and keep in mind that one way a young man, even today, makes his mark is in the military. So his, his goal is, I want revolution, and I want to win revolution for a new country, and I want to uh, garner glory on the battlefield. Okay? Uh, even though he's super smart, uh, and he's writing all the time, he sees that as his ticket to immortality, not his writing. So it's, ah, the Mad King. <laughs> um, king George III was a despotic ruler who det was determined to punish all who dared speak re the revolution. And here's a quote uh, from uh, King George. I wish nothing but good, therefore anybody who disagrees with me is a scoundrel and a traitor. Sound familiar? Mm. <laughs> All right. So uh, again, <laughs> uh, we, the, our, our, we, we learned this in elementary school. We started a revolution so that we would not have a king. So that we would not have somebody who believed he had the divine right to tell us what to do. Right? Uh, so um, uh, this was a revolution. So let let me uh, play, let me see. Hopefully it will play. It might have been that particular link. So let me try this. Okay. price of my love is not a price that you're willing to pay You cry in your tea which you hurl in the sea when you see me go by Why so sad? Remember we made an arrangement when you went away Now you're making me mad Remember despite our estrangement, I'm your man You'll be back, soon you'll see you remember you belong to me You'll be back, time will tell you remember that I served you well Oceans rise, empires fall We have seen each other through it all And when push comes to shove I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love. Da 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 You say our love is draining and you can't go on.
Washington to, to that I know that guy. Surely they'll have him back as king. You know he 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 is in denial and denial. Of course, there's the War of 1812. They really did try to take back the colonies in, in the War of 1812. So, uh, and let's. So, the revolution starts, and one of the one of the one of the ways that history comes alive in this musical is that. Um, you know, we read in the books, yeah, muskets, and, and we want red coats, you know, and, and, and we want. Uh, very little is told of the fear, the terrorism, the, 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 the death, the blood, the sacrifice, the, the burnt property, all of, all of those things that happen in war. It was war on our land. It was... Red soldiers invading our, our homes, uh, uh, or and so uh, the the colonists uh, knew that they were in trouble when uh, a huge fleet of, uh, uh, armada of ships enters New York Harbor, mm -hmm. and they're surrounded, literally surrounded. And so here's the introduction of George Washington. I love this. Troops on the water, thirty two thousand troops in New York Harbor, thirty two thousand troops in New York Harbor. Surround our troops, they surround our troops, they surround our troops. As a kid of the Caribbean, I wished for a war. I knew that I was poor, I knew it was the only way to rise up. If they tell my story, I am either gonna die on the battlefield in glory or rise up. I will fight for this land, but there's only one man who can give us a command so we can rise up. Understand, it's the only way to rise up, rise up. Here he comes. Here comes the general. Ladies and gentlemen. Here comes the general. The moment you've been waiting for. Here comes the general. The pride of Mount Vernon. Here comes the general. To Washington. We are outgunned, outmanned, outnumbered, outplanned. We gotta make an all outstand. Hey yo, I'm gonna need a right hand man. Can I be real a second? 
for just a millisecond Let down my guard and tell the people how I feel a second Now I'm the model of a modern major general The venerated Virginian veteran whose men are all lining up To put me up on a pedestal, writing letters to relatives Embellishing my elegance and eloquence But the elephant is in the room The truth is in your face when you hear the British cannons go <laughs> Any hope of success is fleeting How can I keep leading when the people I'm leading keep retreating? We put a stop to the bleeding as the British take Brooklyn. Night takes Rook, but look, we are outgunned, outmanned, outnumbered, outplanned. We gotta make him all outstand. Hey, yo, I'm gonna need a right hand man. Incoming! The battle, bring down the battery, check the damages. We gotta stop him and rob. So, again, not the whole, not the whole track, but. Um, to this track is called my, a right hand man George Washington wants Alexander Hamilton to serve as the secretary uh, imagine that in, the, in the musical there's two interviews Alan, Aaron Burr is the first interview for the job and immediately Washington dismisses him because he um, is too cautious and and immediately recognizes that he's not going to be able to provide the uh, correspondence and rhetorical rhetorical talents that he knows he needs in writing. Okay, And so uh, uh, Alexander Hamilton walks in and gets the job. He doesn't want the job, but as his commander, he, he gives him, he raises his rank and gives him lieutenant colonel rank, and that, that's good enough for him for, for now. He keeps begging. Give me a battalion. Give me, give me a, a, a leadership in, on the battlefield. Later on, he will get that chance. But in the meantime, uh, you can consider Hamilton as our first CIA agent. Okay, he was all about uh, <coughs> spies. Uh, in order to win wars, you need intelligence. You need your men on the ground getting information about troop movements and and supplies and, and where are they hiding and things like that. So uh, Hamilton was the go-to guy. He had his, and, and uh, although we don't have time to, to go over uh, the other cast members, Hercules uh, Mulligan, uh, John Lawrence, uh, uh, Lafayette, those are uh, his allies, his besties, who helped uh, us win the revolution if, by any means, not just with a gun, with the pen, with intelligence, okay? Um, I love this song, it's very, very short. Uh, George Washington's greatness is rooted in his humility. A tough lesson for the arrogant Hamilton. Listen to George Washington admit his mistakes. Very rare commodity today. I was younger than you are now When I was given my first command I led my men straight into a massacre I witnessed their deaths firsthand. I made every mistake and felt the shame rise in me. And even now I lie awake, knowing history has its eyes on me. History has its eyes. Tell you what I wish I'd known When I was young and dreamed of glory You have no control Who lives, who dies, who tells your story I know that we can win I know that greatness lies in you But remember from here on in History has its eyes Beautiful sentiment. 
Um, and and uh, if you if you remember some of the rhetoric from from Adam Schiff and all those who, who served in the impeachment trial uh, and the, on the House team, they were warning those senators: uh, history will not forget how you voted today. It's on the record. Um, so um, that's why I admire uh, Senator Romney so much. Uh, and he, he is, I think he's going to be fine, but he took a stand. He took a stand. Um, and that, um, that speech of his, uh, many of Adam Schiff's speeches, and in particular uh, Senator Romney's speech, his heartfelt speech about conscience, about an oath that he took to God and the world, um, took an oath. The oath is in the Constitution. I will render impartial justice. I swear that I will render impartial justice. Impartial means not taking sides, in case y'all didn't know that. <laughs> So, um, we win the revolution, and uh, we, uh, Hamilton, uh, along with uh, James Madison, and a few others, uh, really recognize that the Articles of Confederation, uh, the Con Continental Congress, is, is too weak, uh, and uh, they really advocate for a, a, a stronger federal government, and they, uh, they promote this through, uh, a work of essays called the Federalist Papers. Uh, one example of how much uh, Hamilton believed in this, uh, and the reason he was suspected, again, it, um, Hamilton uh, knew that the only way to pay for a standing army, I mean, it's, it's kind of like contradiction. We just got rid of an army who was invading us. Why do you want to start a new one? Why do you want to, and, and why do you want to tax us to pay for this army, and, and uh, all of those kinds of things. So they thought he wanted to be king. Everybody suspected because he wanted a strong executive. But, but the genius of the Constitution comes in its balance of powers, right? Checks and balances. Uh, the, the president shouldn't be any stronger than the, the Congress and should not be any stronger than the courts. Uh, there were other republics that had been formed, other constitutions that had been written. I think what made... Uh, and there was always a balance, sort of trying to be a balance between a prime minister or executive and, and the legislature. By, by adding the third part, the, the courts, the courts keeping both other branches in check is another element of genius in, in Alexander Hamilton's head and James Madison's head. But Alexander Hamilton wrote the majority of those Federalist paper essays. Uh, and so, uh, I, I entitled I entitled this uh, this this lecture uh, Hamilton: How a Hip Hop Musical Inspired Me to Be a Better Teacher. Uh, I really think, if I'm more honest, a, a more honest title would be Hamilton: How Hip Hop Turned Me into a Conservative. Mm. Mm. Now, the word conservative is it's not a dirty word, y'all. The word liberal is not a dirty word. These are two valid ideologies that have run the stream of our Western tradition since, I mean, it's part of any government, part of any, any uh, country. Though, uh, it, it, you just have to understand what the word conservative means. If you say that, um, you could call me a conservative, meaning someone who wants to conserve our democratic institutions. Okay? You could call me uh, a conservative if, you're, if I'm someone who wants to conserve the founding principles of our Constitution that no man is above the law. You can call me a conservative if you, uh, as someone who wants to conserve the Bill of Rights, including the freedom of speech, freedom of the press, freedom of all people who reside within our border to practice or not practice the religion of their choice. Those principles are under attack. And so it's not really a matter of whose side you're on or which party you, you're on. It's a, 
are you on the side of the Constitution or not? And of course, both parties claim to be the patriotic, but um, uh, this musical made me fall in love with these founding principles. And because of that, um, I can call myself a conservative in that respect. Now, when you say freedom of the press, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, freedom implies liberal, right? So again, we're all, we all are conservative in some ways and liberal in others. Uh, I'm going to give one more definition of a conservative that, that Nichols isn't here. Uh, the, conservative, the, the conservative mindset that designed the Constitution had a skeptical view, philosophical, philosophical view of the human nature. They believe that humans are selfish, are self-interested. If they have the chance, they're going to get what they can get and to hell with everyone else. <coughs> That's why they created balance of power. They did not want any one man to say what I say goes. Right? Because they knew if they put such power in one man, that man, by his very nature, would use it as a weapon. Sound familiar? I have not said his name, y'all. not said his name. All right, give me credit. So, two visions, two visions of democracy. Thomas Jefferson and Alexander Hamilton were diametrically opposed. Thomas Jefferson, the landed gen gentleman from Virginia, uh, believed in agrarian and an agrarian society where, where states would have the, the primary power. Hamilton <coughs> believed that uh, we needed uh, a strong central government. Uh, and so the government's already been formed. Washington is president. And this is the first cabinet meeting. And the reason I'm playing this track is because it really shows the conflict between Thomas Jefferson's vision and Alexander Hamilton's vision. Conservative, liberal. Ladies and gentlemen, you could have been anywhere in the world tonight, but you're here with us in New York City. Are you ready for a cabinet meeting, huh? The issue on the table, Secretary Hamilton's plan to assume state debt and establish a national bank. Secretary Jefferson, you have the floor, sir. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fought for these ideals, we shouldn't settle for less. These are wise words, enterprising men quote them. Don't act surprised, you guys, cause I wrote them. Ow, but Hamilton forgets. His plan would have the government assume state debt. Now place your bets as to who that benefits. The very seat of government where Hamilton sits. Not true. Oh, if the shoe fits, wear it. If New York's in debt, why should Virginia bear it? Uh, our debts are paid, I'm afraid Don't tax the South, cause we got it made in the shade In Virginia, we plant seeds in the ground We create, you just wanna move our money around This financial plan is an outrageous demand And it's too many damn pages for any man to understand Stand with me in the land of the free Pray to God we never see Hamilton's candidacy Look, when Britain taxed our tea, we got frisky Imagine what gon' happen when you try to tax our whiskey Thank you, Secretary Jefferson Secretary Hamilton, your response. Thomas, that was a real nice declaration. Welcome to the present, we're running a real nation. Would you like to join us? We're staying mellow, doing whatever the hell it is you do in Monticello. If we assume the debts, the union gets a new line of credit, a financial diuretic, how do you not get it? If we're aggressive and competitive, the union gets a boost, you'd rather give it a sedative? A civics lesson from a slave or hey neighbor Your debts are paid cause you don't pay for labor We plant seeds in the south, we create, they keep ranting We know who's really doing the planting And another thing, Mr. Age of Enlightenment Don't lecture me about the war, you didn't fight in it You think I'm frightened of you, man? We almost died in the trench While well, you were off getting high with the French Thomas Jefferson always hesitant with the president Medicine, there isn't a plan he doesn't jettison Madison, you mad as a hat, so take your medicine than the national debt is in Sitting there useless as two shits Hey, turn around, bend over I'll show you where my shoe fits Excuse me Madison, Jefferson, take a walk Hamilton, take a walk We're gonna reconvene after a brief recess Hamilton, sir, a word You don't have the votes You don't have the votes You're gonna need congratulations
congressional approval and you don't have the votes Such a blunder, sometimes it makes me wonder why I even bring the thunder Why he even brings the thunder? Wanna pull yourself together? I'm sorry, these Virginians are birds of a feather. Young man, I'm from Virginia, so watch your mouth. So we let Congress get held hostage by the South? You need the votes. No, we need bold strokes. We need this no, plan. No, you need to convince more folks. Well, James Madison won't talk to me. That's a non-starter. Ah. Winning was easy, young man. Governing's hard. They're being intransigent. You have to find a compromise. But they don't have a plan. They just hate mine. Convince them otherwise. And what happens if I don't get congressional approval? I imagine they'll call for your removal. Sir, figure it out, Alexander. That's an order from your commander. So, Hamilton's trying to get his national back. He's trying to get this debt plan it up through. All right. Do y'all mind if I go for ten more minutes? All right. All right. Uh, let me uh, play this next track. Of all Lin Mar uh, Miranda's uh, lyrics, none has had more staying power than "I want to be in the room where it happens." You've heard of that phrase? Mm -hmm. uh, this song epitomizes the fact that political power still resides in backroom deals, but re also requires compromise. So. This is a dramatization of a compromise. Here, Aaron Burr, Hamilton's other political rival, feels left out. Okay, so uh, he, here, uh, Aaron Burr is performing. By the way, side note: former National Security Advisor John Bolton entitled his latest book, <laughs> yes, yes. "The Room Where It Happened," past tense, a White House memoir. Ah, Mr. Secretary. Mr. Burr, sir. And did you hear the news about good old General Mercer? No. You know Claremont Street? Yeah. They renamed it after him. The Mercer legacy is secure. Sure. And all he had to do was die. Yeah, that's a lot less work. We ought to give it a try. <laughs> now, how you gonna get your debt plan through? I guess I'm gonna finally have to listen to you. Really? Talk less. Smile more. <laughs> Whatever it takes to get my plan on the Congress floor. Now Madison and Jefferson are merciless. Well, hate the sin, love the sinner. Hamilton. I'm sorry, Burr, I gotta go. But decisions are happening over dinner. Two Virginians and an immigrant walk into a room diametrically opposed foes. They emerge with a compromise, having opened doors that were previously closed. Rose. The immigrant emerges with unprecedented financial power, a system he can shape however he wants. The Virginians emerge with the nation's capital. And here's the piece de resistance. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. No one else was in the room where it happened, the room where it happened, the room where it happened. No one really knows how the game is played. Of the trade, how the sausage gets made. We just assume that it happens. But no one else is in the room where it happens. Thomas Clay. Alexander was on Washington's doorstep one day in distress and disarray. Thomas claims Alexander said, I've nowhere else to turn. And basically begged me to join the fray. Thomas claims I approached Madison and said, I know you hate him, but let's hear what he has to say. Thomas claims Well, I arranged the meeting. I arranged the menu, the venue, the seating. But no one else was in the room where it happened. The room where it happened. The room where it happened. No one else was in the room where it happened. How the parties get to yes The pieces that are sacrificed in every game of chess We just assume that it happens But no one else is in the room where it happens Meanwhile, Madison is grappling with the fact that Not every issue can be settled by committee Meanwhile, Congress is fighting over where to put the capital <laughs> It isn't pretty. Then Jefferson approaches with the dinner and invite. And Madison responds with Virginian insight. Maybe we can solve one problem with another and win a victory for the Southerners. In other words, oh, oh. a quid pro quo. I suppose. Wouldn't you like to work a little closer to home? Actually, I would. Well, I propose the Potomac. And you'll provide him his vote. Well, we'll see how. So, Madison, uh, excuse me, Hamilton gets his national bank. Uh, the reason they suspected Hamilton is because you have to remember that New York was the capital, the first capital of the United States. So 
the, the, the Virginians were suspicious of combining both financial and uh, political power in one place. And so the compromise, the quid pro quo is, you vote for this debt plan, this national bank, and we will establish the capital on the Potomac in Virginia. You won't have as far to go to, to come to Congress. So uh, that is uh, the compromise that happened the, in the room where it happens. Uh, let's see if I can wrap this thing up here. Um, I love this, uh, and this is really going to be the final track. Uh, I'm not going to play a Senator Kane's uh, uh, lecture here, but I encourage you when, you, when you get a chance, to read George Washington's farewell address. Um, he did not run for a third term. They begged, they begged him to run for a second term. He, he conceded. Uh, then when the third term came around, uh, they were begging him uh, to, uh, to run, and he said, no, we, this is a republic, this is an election, somebody else, uh, we, need to, we need to teach them how to say goodbye. We need to show the world that we are a civilized republic and that we're not going to start a war just because we have a new president. Okay? Uh, and uh, George Washington's farewell address had lots of warnings to the new nation. In particular, uh, uh, fear of partisanship. Be careful with political parties. They have their agendas. They have their lobbyists. They have, which is true. But he was worried that partisanship would tear the country apart. Prophetic. Secondly, he worried about foreign interference. Uh, getting too cozy with the French. Getting, uh, or, or having a, a particular country demonized as the enemy. Okay? Uh, so that, that uh, but listen to, um, George Washington's explanation to Alexander, I want you to do me one more favor. Please write this speech for me. You write better than I do, okay? Uh, politicians of the day, they had their speech writers. Alexander was the speech writer for George Washington. So George Washington's farewell address is really Hamilton's words. George Washington's ideas put to words uh, by Alexander Hamilton. Mr. President, you asked to see me. I know you're busy. What do you need, sir? Sir? I want to give you a word of warning. Sir, I don't know what you heard, but whatever it is, Jefferson started it. Thomas Jefferson resigned this morning. You're kidding. I need a favor. Whatever you say, sir, Jefferson will pay for this behavior. Shh. Talk less. I'll use the press. I'll write under a pseudonym. You'll see what I can do to him. I need you to draft an address Yes, he resigned, you can finally speak your mind No, he's stepping down so he can run for president ha! Good luck defeating you, sir I'm stepping down, I'm not running for president I'm sorry, what? One last time Relax, have a drink with me One last time Let's take a break tonight And then we'll teach him how to say goodbye to say goodbye, you and I. No, sir. Yeah, I want to talk about neutrality. Sure. With Britain and France on the verge of war, is this the best I time? I want to warn against partisan fighting. What? Pick up a pen, start writing. I want to talk about what I have learned, the hard won wisdom I have earned. As far as the people are concerned, you have to serve. You could continue to serve. No. One last time, the people will hear from me. One last time, and if we get this right, we're going to teach them how to say goodbye. You and I. Mr. President, we will say your words. me when I'm gone. Like the scripture says, everyone shall sit under their own vine and fig tree and 
no one shall make them afraid They'll be safe in the nation we've made I want to sit under my own vine and fig tree A moment alone in the shade At home in this nation we've made One last time One last time Though, in reviewing the incidents of my administration, I am unconscious of intentional error, I am nevertheless too sensible of my defects not to think it probable that I may have committed many errors. I shall also carry with me the hope that my country will view them with indulgence, and that after 45 years of my life dedicated to its service with an upright zeal, the faults of incompetent abilities will be consigned to oblivion as I, I myself will soon be to the mansions of rest. I anticipate with pleasing expectation that retreat in which I promise myself to realize the sweet enjoyment of partaking in the midst of my fellow citizens. The benign influence of the good laws of the free government, the ever favorite object of my heart, and the happy reward as I trust for mutual care, labors and dangers, one last time. George Washington's going home. You teach him how to say goodbye. George Washington's going home. so profound um, and so um, demonstrates the object of his heart was this republic, George Washington. And so, uh, so the stars of the show, the stars of this musical is not just Hamilton. Uh, it, it, it's, it's George Washington, it's Thomas Jefferson, it's the recognition that they were all flawed characters. Okay? Uh, they, were all, they all made mistakes. They were not saints. Our Constitution was not perfect. It institutionalized slavery in, in, in its very document. Our, our, when, when Thomas Jefferson wrote, all men are created equal, th those men at that time had white land-owning gentlemen in mind when they said that. And, but, and, and I've had these conversations with Dr. Franklin, you know, why are you so upset about uh, 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 impeachment or, or, or this president, you know, we've never had, you know, African American people have never had full uh, frank and fr uh, full rights in, in this country until very recently. And I said, yeah, that's true, but the arc of justice still leads, leads and expands. And, and I just remember, um, I, I still believe, I still have hope, I still have hope that those principles will endure, um, and that when we say all men are created equal, we're talking about all men and women, black, white, immigrant, non-immigrant. Uh, I want to remind you that the preamble of the Constitution does not say we, the citizens. It says we, the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the common welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish these, this Constitution of the United States of America. That preamble is the thesis statement 
of our Constitution. It's something that our students should memorize. Uh, I think it, it, uh, having them do a summary or a paraphrase of those last lines of George Washington's uh, farewell address would be a very uh, worthwhile exercise. So I have dreams, I have dreams of, 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 of engaging our students with these founding documents and, 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 and those uh, philosophers that influence the, the likes of Hamilton and, and Jefferson and such. So um, I, I, really, I really don't have uh, much more to say. I, I, um, I'm just going to give some advice. This is 35 pieces of advice written by a man named David Evan McMillan. All right? uh, he, he's a Republican, conservative, Utah, probably a Mormon or Latter-day Saint, as we, they want to be called. Okay? Um, and uh, he says, here are 35 critical actions we must take to encourage others to take in the defense of our democracy. Number one, vote in every election. Donate to honorable candidates, parties, and civic organizations. Call and write our representatives in Congress. Meet with local, state, and federal elected leaders in person. Read multiple credible news and opinion sources daily. All right. uh, 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 subscribe to very credible, very credible news sources. Write op-eds and letters to the uh, editor about issues of concern. Join, support, and actively participate in pro-democracy organizations. Attend town halls. Volunteer for honorable candidates and their political campaigns. Pursue public office yourself. Twelve, uh, Twelve, perform random acts of kindness for complete strangers, just for the hell of it, right? Make eye contact and smile at complete strangers. We the people, we're all here, we all live together. We're all neighbors. Demand government action to ensure election security. Who isn't for election security? Well, okay. Spread truth and facts, truth and facts uh, uh, on social media and elsewhere. Th th I consider this my Vietnam. Okay? Uh, it's not venereal disease, as someone claimed. It's Facebook. It's misinformation. And it's coming. It's going to be nasty, y'all. 26. Expose counter divisive rhetoric and disinformation in social media and elsewhere. Continually choose hope over cynicism and defeat. Study the U.S. Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, and the Federalist Papers. Carry it around with you. Read it. Help advance political reforms and protect and strengthen our democracy. Study the lives and speeches of these founding fathers. Embrace and advocate for the inherent equality and, liber and liberty of all human beings. Study books about authoritarianism, all right, and how it's you know, on the rise in, in Europe and other parts of the world. Expose and counter anti-freedom and anti-equality leaders and organizations. Expose them. Expose the Ku Klux Klan. It used to be, you used to have to, used to have shame. That's why they used to cover their heads. They, they, they had some shame. Now it's like white shirt and khakis carrying torches. Oppose leaders who scapegoat entire groups of classes of immigrants or Americans. Yep. Help new immigrants integrate into local uh, uh, communities. Thank you, Dana, for your work with Syrian immigrants. Contribute to the honorable challenges of elected officials undermining the House impeachment. So. I'll go on. Read and listen to the opinions of people of good faith who disagree with you. Hmm? Listen. Let's talk. Allow your beliefs about people with whom you disagree to be challenged. Study the facts about major policy changes. Demand evidence-based. Okay, we do it. We should. We do it at Mountain View. We should demand it of our government officials. Uh, participate in organized service projects. Stay informed of news related to freedom and democracy abroad, all around the world. Recognize and accept everyone's opportunity for redemption. Seek and share light, goodness, and beauty wherever found in nature and humanity. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Um, I can't see any reason to oppose any one of these 35 pieces of advice. Right? And I hope, uh, I hope that all, all of you learned a little something about our country and our constitution and about music. Uh, I, I still believe that uh, Hamilton, the musical, is a masterpiece. And by masterpiece, I define a masterpiece as a work, number one, that you can listen to again and again and again and always get a little more. Okay? Uh, a masterpiece is also that kind of work where both the music and the story 
fit just right. Where you cannot remove a single song, you cannot remove a single lyric, you cannot remove a single note without it falling apart. Uh, I encourage you to download the whole soundtrack. Basically, it's about two hours long. It is a opera in the, in, the, in the real sense of the word in that it is sung all the way through. There's music all the way through. When you listen to the score on, on, on your iTunes or uh, if you still buy CDs, if, if you listen to the whole score, you are listening to the whole show. There is no, no difference. Um, it will uh, perform uh, on tour again in, in Fort Worth in the, in the next, uh, I think, April. It's coming back to Fort Worth. Uh, so if you've never seen it live, I recommend it. Uh, uh, we just learned that the original cast, the original production, was filmed and will be released for the rest of us to see at least more than once. Uh, it will be released in theaters. And like I said before, uh, uh, Miranda's um, In the Heights will also be released as a real movie. So um, thank you very much for coming, and, and God bless the United States.